Namaskaram. Can you please share some of your uh, memories with, uh, with Guru? Like the first time you met him and some special moments that you shared. It's an honor for me, talk on Guru, my master, Nitya Chaitanya Yati. I knew about Guru through his articles published in Matrabhumi Weekly at that time. The editor was N. V. Krishnavarya, who was a great scholar who taught me grammar, Sanskrit grammar, who was my, who is my guru in poetry. N. V. Krishnavarya, who is my master in poetry, and in Sanskrit grammar, in many things. There are some, some actions in my life also. He is my guru. Now he told me, if you are impressed with the essays of Guru Nityadaya Nehdi, you meet him. I said, I will. So I went up to Fung Hill. Kadavarar Putekrishan great poet and my senior fellow poet, friend. He was with me, I remember. His wife was there and two or three friends also. We went to Puti and stayed there for some time. Two or three days, that's all. So I had occasion to talk to him. He talked to me. He was kind enough to find time to talk to me. And I was given accommodation there. All of us. That was my first contact. And then he came several times to Trivandrum, to Pangapara. Whenever he comes, it was a soul to call a few friends, he calls, but really disciples. And I was fortunate to be one among them. So we met several times. And once he was invited to give a series of lectures on Upanishads and the Indian vision by the Kerala University. I attended all these lectures. He was there. It was then that my daughter, a very small child, she presented the bouquet of her father. Now what impressed me was that he means always, even in personal talk, something more than what he says. A word is not the meaning, not even the sound, but a pointer to something behind words. Every word invites your attention to something beyond the meaning, beyond the sound. Beyond the poetic depths, something beyond all that. Now his words were chosen such that they point to this unfathomed level of the deep inner joy, nitya chaitanya, the inner light and the inner joy. That's about his words. When I was, a, I am a teacher, you know. I was head of the department of English in the university college and once uh, some of us thought that the university campus is always hampered by strikes and shouting and even bombing, violence of all kinds. How to save education was our problem. Only very few teachers, Professor Kudai my senior English professor, she was there. We formed a society, Society for Protection of Education, Vidya Vyasa Samirakshana Samiti. Members of different subjects were there, departments were there. Pradaya Kumari was the president, I was the secretary, 
and some of us tried our best to resist violence with non-violence. To resist students with affection and love. And we wanted a patron. And all of us agreed, Guru Nitya Nehri shall be the patron. And he was the patron. Till his samadhi, he was the patron. But that didn't carry much, but that showed a possibility of solving solutions with, with non-violence and love and affection. If you are affectionate towards students, they will return affection. They will have a self-consideration, a self-introspection, he said. He was right. And I don't know what people will say now, but the UGC scales was discussed. University Grants Commission scales for all teachers. People who are getting 2,000 were desirous of getting 12,000 and 15,000. It was a leap of salary increase. And there was a strike justifying that. Strike of the teachers. Some of, I wrote an article. This is not required. What the teacher requires is not salary, not even books, but travel grant. Give teachers a free pass all over India to the Himalayas, by the time I had to sit in the Himalayas. Or even international, give a passport and give money, plane fare, for international too. No, who would listen to that? And we were surrounded by revolutionaries and they questioned us. It went on like that, but the spirit behind all that resistance was spiritual support of Nitya, Guru Nitya Zayadi He was there to lead, show the way. Just as Krishna showed the way to the Pandavas. <laughs> and one memory I'll tell you about him. Now he, I noticed that he was very silent in conversation. He spoke very, very few words. But those words were meaningful. They said, how do you get that right word at the right time? You keep always silent. And he said, you have to cultivate the habit of listening. Talking is what anybody can do. Even animals do that. But listening, the art of listening, is a basic capability to be developed. Then I somehow, I followed it. And I said, you mean Shraddha? Yes, I mean Shraddha. Sraddhavan Lefade Kamam. If you have Sraddha, the art of listening, at the deeper level you have a communication with the other. That is what matters. And you know, when I was a high priest of my temple in Tirivella, big temple, it was an ancient, it is an ancient temple. 2030 years old now. I was a high priest and uh, the puja was just uh, more than a challenge to me at that time because I had to do the nyasas and one of the texts to be learned by heart and assimilated is Kanadas Vaisheshigam. All the 24 elements we have to digest and uh, nyasa. Practice. It is a long process. And the temple attendants at that time, they didn't want all this. They wanted prasadam and then most of the shantis wanted dakshana. I said, I never received dakshana, I never wanted it. Those who are, they give prasadam and bless. Of course, I bless, but I don't receive dakshana. Because money doesn't matter. The empty hand is the richest hand. I know that. 
and well, once they were getting angry with me, and somehow they managed an order from the Travancore Devotion Board, somehow, with their connivance, they kept me out of the temple for two weeks. I was out of the temple. And the crime was that I crossed the sea to attend a conference in England, in York. This is not a crime. So I said, I am not convinced that it is a crime. Nor does the Veda teach me it's a sin to cross the sea. But the Veda says, you cross the sea. Samudram gacha swaha. Ma gacha, not ma gacha, but samudram gacha swaha. I stood firm by that. And Guru Nityananda wrote a letter to me. You listen. Be peaceful. Be affectionate to those who are angry. You will win. He said. He wrote a letter. And to my shock, in that letter, he addressed me not Vishnu or dear Vishnu, but Bhagavan. I said, Swamiji, this is too much. I am not Bhagavan, I am his priest. And he answered, You are the priest. But the priest and the Bhagavan become one in my life. <laughs> Until I stepped down, because that controversy died out. I was readmitted to the temple. Swamiji was right. I was readmitted to the temple. And they requested me to take up the office of the priest again. I was there. Again, I became. I was the messenger holding the rights for some more time. Then Swamiji was right. Finally, what is right? The Vedic justice has to be done. The Vedic proof never goes wrong. He taught me that lesson. Now he was a great soul who came to help several people like that. You know, his personal letters were published in Guru Gula magazine for a long time. All kinds of people, all religious faith, all politicians, all nationalities, all come to him as human beings, as a soul. And he shares his spiritual wisdom with all. And he never pretends to be a saint. <laughs> that is most difficult. He is actually a saint, but he pretends to be an ordinary human being, one among all. How could he achieve that? I don't know. He is no more. I can't ask him. <laughs> another, another pleasant memory, <laughs> which I must remember now because I am very weak of hearing now by the medicines, as an aspect of the medicines. Once he wrote to me a letter. My listening power is all right, but my hearing power is weak. And the doctor said, I can recover the power to hear if I take a surgery in the inner eye, inner ear. But then next paragraph is, but I have I am feeling now. Whatever I have heard is enough. Madhi Gartha Madhi. Whatever I have heard is enough. I will attune my ear to that inaudible, inner, internal sound, which I can hear. From Shruta to Shravavya. From Shruti to Shravavya. From what you hear to what deserves to be heard. Shravavya. I was inspired by your pressure. I wrote a poem, Shravavya. And curiously enough, that collection of poems, which contains Sauravya, brought me the national award. <laughs> I believe, by his blessing. Sauravya, Vijayaniliya that's a book. In that year, my book was selected 
And from Delhi, I go to I go to <laughs> order. You are selected for receiving the national award for your book, Sroolamia, for book which contains Sroolamia. I firmly believe that his hand was there behind, just to hold up the idea, not me, not my poem, which is an ordinary poem, I know, but that idea that there is something beyond here, beyond her, beyond hearing, beyond her, something that deserves to be her, Sraudhavya. Now I am, I am <laughs> almost deaf and quite often I remember what the Swamiji said. Srodhavyam. Am I hearing Srodhavyam? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I know sometimes I may hear. I am hopeful. And that was one thing he taught all of us, be hopeful. Never give up desire to live. Why does man live? He would ask us. Man lives because he is born. Just because he is born. Some say he lives for bread. And some live like that. But man lives with something different. Different from bread. Just because you are born, you need not live. You can die. For the gods can bring it about. But you are not dying, you live why? And he said, there is an inner joy of existence. <laughs> Ananda. Ananda, Ananda, Nevava, Ede, Yoga, Mahi, and De. Ananda, Tadani, Bhuvani. Ananda, Prayam, Kapisam, Vishanti. Ananda, Prima. The primary joy of existence. This is the desire, the cosmic desire, Brahma. Ananda Brahma. Ananda Brahma Dingajanath. This is what we have to experience. There is an inner joy. So that makes me alive, even in my present state of illness. So what can I say more? <clears throat> he was a great soul who lived with us. I am not convinced that he is no more. If I said he is no more, I correct. She is no more in the world of five senses. But he is always there. Just as truth has been always there. Just as Dharma has been always there. Just as Ananda has been always there. So I'm sure he is there listening to my nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Asking me, oh, you, you are prepared to share your experiences. I say one more word and so. When once somebody talked about experience, he said, English teachers may not agree to me, but I will use a new word. Not experience, but imperience. Not experience, but imperience. The experience, you show like this. Not experience, but imperience. I think there is time for me to experience the truth. Thank you, fellow disciples, I should say. And disciples, disciples. The great Sri Narayana, the very Krishna, who wrote poems in the Vedic language for a mantra. Even Lord Shankara never wrote a poem in the Vedic language. 
The only Rishi, as far as I know, who wrote in the Vedic language was Sri Narayana, the Bhagavan. So, Guru Nityayana is his disciple. I am Guru's disciple, and so I am disciple of the disciple. So, I am most surprised and most happy your words that I had. I was honored to be invited and share experiences or the possibility of experiences. Thank you.